Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing 10 powerful features for your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra's camera. This is one of the most powerful cameras on the market, and you spend a lot of money on this phone. So what I want to do is I want to maximize your ownership by introducing to some really amazing features. Let's dive in and get started right away. All right, so as you know, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra has a 200 megapixel camera. Now, the problem is... When you launch the camera and you take a photo, some people think that you just took a 200 megapixel photo. That is not the case. The phone by default only shoots 12 megapixels. However, there is a button right here that you can tap on and you can manually switch to 200 megapixels and then take a 200 megapixel photo. Now, the reason that you wanna do that is if you want a photo, to give you the greatest amount of detail because a 200 megapixel option is gonna give you the maximum resolution. Additionally, you can go back here and you can actually do a 50 megapixel photo. This is also gonna get you great amount of detail. It's gonna be one step above the default 12. This one right here that you get every time you launch your camera. So this is gonna be great for everyday photos. You just take a photo, you're good to go. But if you wanna take more detailed photos, maybe to print them later, you wanna switch over to a higher resolution to get even more detailed photos. And I will show you one more thing that's really cool. I'm gonna take three photos right now. I'm gonna take one at 200. I'm gonna take one at 50 and I'm gonna take one at 12. And then I'm gonna tap on the preview button right here, and I have those three right here. Look at this. I can swipe up on any photo, and I can actually see what that photo was shot at, what resolution. So this one is at 12 megapixels. It is, that's the resolution, and that is the size of that photo, okay? Now look at this. If I swipe over, this is the 50 megapixel photo. But the problem is, because it is higher resolution, it takes more space. So this is almost six megabytes. And if I swipe over again, here's the 200 megapixel photo. Now this one is almost 17 megabytes because it's got the highest resolution as you can see. So always swipe up to get details of a photo, to get information about it later, because you're not gonna remember off the top of your head what exact resolution you used every single time. So this is gonna be a reminder. One more thing, when you take a photo and you pull it up, at the bottom, you are gonna get some options. In this case, it's asking me if I want to remaster the photo. So if the photo doesn't look right to you, you can tap on remaster, and it's gonna allow you to make some changes, automatic changes. You're gonna get a before and an after preview, okay? So in this case, there's not much difference, minimal difference, but many times remaster ends up making your photos look even better, okay? So that's that. Just be aware that your camera is capable of multiple resolutions that you get to choose manually. And by the way, if you want to zoom in, you know that this phone can zoom in up to 100, okay? So that's great, but if you wanna use the maximum zooming capability, you wanna stay at 12 megapixels because if you switch over to 200, you're not gonna be able to zoom in. If I tap this, I can only go up to 10 times zoom, okay? Just something to keep in mind. So with the 12 megapixel, I can zoom in all the way up to 100, anywhere in between, it's all gonna be up to me. So if you want maximum zooming capability, stay at 12 megapixels. Now, one more thing you wanna do is you wanna to go to your settings, okay? And you wanna go all the way down, not all the way down, just a little bit, and make sure the grid lines are enabled. I think they're turned off by default. If you enable them, you will have these grid lines. So you can see it's easier for me to frame photos and maybe put something in the center or to the side, but I know exactly where it is thanks to those nice guides. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about has to do with the video. So when I go to the video right over here, again, over here, I can choose the video quality. I can go from high definition to full high definition to 4K all the way up to 8K recording. Now, with the 8K recording, there's something I wanna show you that's really amazing. So let's say I record a video in 8K, okay? Let's just record a couple seconds here. 
and then I'm gonna turn that off. What I can now do is that 8K video is extremely high resolution. So I can actually go inside and I can create images out of that 8K video. So here's the video playing, you can see, and here's a button on the side. That's the capture button. So let's say you took a video in 8K and it's a beautiful vista, it's a jungle or whatever, and you want to extract photos from certain frames. So play the video and just tap on this button and that is going to extract images out of the video. So if I go back into the preview in my gallery, here's the video and here's the image I just extracted from that video. And again, because it's an 8K video, it's ultra high quality, you get an ultra high quality extracted picture from the video. So this way you can actually have unlimited pictures that you can make out of a video. So we're back at the interface. Again, remember from here, for most of your everyday shots, you wanna stay at full high definition at 60 to get the best quality and the smoothest quality. But when you need to go higher, then you manually go higher to 4K or 8K. Just something to keep in mind so you know how to use the camera that you paid all this money for. All right, the next thing I wanna be talking about is a very expensive feature found on DSLR cameras. So this is gonna apply both to photo and video. Let me show you an example. So let's say you're outside and you're taking a photo of your kid or maybe your pet, or maybe you're recording a bunch of moving cars at a racetrack. You have an amazing option. So first go to the photo and make sure you're in 12 megapixels, then go to settings and then scroll down and look for tracking auto focus, enable it, okay? Then go back to the camera, and now let's say this thing right here was the object you wanna track. So the object is moving around, maybe a pet, maybe a kid, maybe a car. You wanna make sure every time you take a photo, it is focused on this object. So I'm gonna put the object right here, and all you do is you tap on it, okay? Now you have this yellow square that is tracking this. So wherever I go, it is gonna track it and it's gonna stay focused on it. This is an amazing feature, okay? If this was a kid, a plane, a car, whatever, it is gonna track it as long as it remains inside the viewfinder. And if I, if I exit and come back, it is gonna recognize it again. That's how smart it is. Exit, come back, boom. Okay, so just remember that it's an amazing feature to take photos of objects that are moving around. The same thing applies to video. So if I go to my video, and if I'm in full high definition at 60, for example, I can go to the settings, and if I scroll down, it's gonna be right here. Okay, now, again, in video, I can do the same thing. Tap on it, start recording. And now if I move this, it is just gonna remain focused on this subject. It's very smart and it's not gonna let it go, okay? See, fast moving, no problem. So the focus will remain on this guy. It's not gonna remain on my hand. See, my hand is out of focus, as you can see, because this is the one that the camera is focusing on. This is a fantastic feature and also a very expensive feature. Now you may have heard that the iPhone 15 Pro Max has the capability of shooting at 24 megapixels, but here you can only do 12, 50, and 200. Actually, you can do 24 if that's something you're looking to do. What you do is you tap on more and you go to Expert Raw, okay? This is gonna be an advanced mode that is gonna be fully manual and it's kind of for professionals, but you can still use it if you want to. You can see right here, I can tap this, and I have 12, I have 24, and I have 50. Okay, so you can shoot at 24 megapixels. The only thing is, when you shoot at expert raw, there is extra processing involved to make that photo even more superior, and also it is highly editable to make it better in post processing. But I just wanna let you guys know that the option is in fact right here. Now there is one more thing that is pretty amazing. I wanna let you guys, I'm gonna show that to you real quick. Let's go back to the regular photo. So when you are in any mode, you can switch between modes like this. But if you're in any particular mode, when you tap on settings, 
you only get settings available for that particular mode. So all these settings here apply to the photo mode, okay? And if I go back out and if I switch over to video, now when I tap on settings, I get my video related settings as you can see, okay? So just be aware of that. And again, if I go to more and if I go to expert raw and if I tap on settings, then I get expert raw related settings in here, all right? Fantastic. Another amazing feature in this camera is document scanning. So if you go to settings and if you tap on the scan documents and text, make sure this is all enabled, including the auto scan, okay? Now look at how amazing this is. Let's say you have a receipt, a book, a piece of paper, whatever. You just wanna scan that as a document into your phone. I'm just gonna bring in a piece of document. I'm gonna hold it like this. Let's say this is a receipt, could be anything, any document. So I'm gonna bring it right here, and it's gonna take a couple seconds, but the phone is gonna recognize that this is in fact text. It says, hold the camera still. It's gonna scan the whole text. So now I can scan it, I can translate it, I can add it to a note, or I can just copy all the text. The good news is I did it just by holding it to the camera. The camera did everything by itself, and they, and then it gave me four options. Now I wanna scan this as if it was a document. So I would tap on scan and look at what happens. I can then align these and then I can tap on save. So now that document, whatever it is, could be a receipt, could be a piece of paper with information on it, could be a menu in a restaurant, whatever, it is now saved onto my computer as a document. And you can see even removed my fingerprint from here. Okay, not perfect, but it's gone. So it's a great little feature that I think you're gonna be using a lot. The next thing we're gonna talk about has to do with camera optimization. So if you go to your settings, right over here, it says intelligent optimization. Tap on it, and what you can do is you can optimize the quality of the photos you take. Now, I keep mine at maximum, but some people like to take fast shots of whatever. So you can actually sacrifice the quality of the photo but increase the speed at which they're taken. And that's the shutter speed. So now when I go back out, I'm able to tap the speed button so much faster so I can take photos in a quick succession as I'm just moving around or whatever. But I like my uh, photos to be at the maximum quality, so I keep at maximum. You can do medium if you want, or minimum. Again, these are things you can modify based on need. So I'm gonna do maximum, and again, it's gonna be pretty fast, but the other option is gonna be faster. Now, the final thing I wanna be talking about has to do with the watermark feature. So when you take a photo by default, the photo doesn't show anything, okay? Now I'm gonna show you guys, let's go back to the camera. If you go to settings, and if you scroll down a little bit, and if you go to watermark, you can enable this, and then you can customize it. So it shows you the model name of your phone at the bottom left of the device, which you can modify. I can bring it to the middle or put it to the top or whatever. Let's just keep it right on the corner. I can change the font. And also I can change the what it says at the bottom. So you can put your name, your signature, whatever. I'm just gonna keep it, let's just say S24, so you can see the difference. So S24, now when I go out there and I, I take a photo, and if I go inside, it's gonna say S24 at the bottom, so you know. So if you share that photo, you can have a signature, a watermark on all your photos, if you so desire. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know for now, guys. Have a fantastic day.